Hey, turns out plants crave even more than we thought. Oops, science was settled till it wasn't. Plants absorb 31% more CO2 than thought. Grabbing this from What's Up With That, a new study reveals that plants have been absorbing 31% more CO2 than previously believed. 31%, not three or one, a glaring error that casts serious doubt on the climate models, emission scenarios, and policy prescriptions like the deadly net zero. For years, we were told that the science is settled, and this isn't even getting into their MAGA jabs and COVID vaccines, and that urgent action was needed to avoid catastrophic warming. But this discovery suggests that our models have been dramatically underestimating Mother Nature's ability to manage CO2. This revelation not only upends the rationale behind aggressive policies, but also raises broader questions about the supposed certainty of climate science. Even the phrase, settled science, has been the bedrock of climate advocacy for decades, really, of course, all kicked in the last four to eight years. We've been told that if we don't make rapid, costly, dangerous, deadly changes, we'll face imminent disaster. I'm pretty sure Time Magazine and Greta said we'd already be dead by now. Skeptics treated as heretics, while the so-called consensus was portrayed as unquestionable. James, quick sidebar. Have you noticed how quickly Greta fell from grace when she dared criticize occupied Palestine? Holy crap. I hope that's... That's probably a huge lesson for her going, ah, I'm learning things about the way the world works. Continuing, it turns out we were 31% wrong about something as fundamental as CO2 absorption. This isn't a minor correction. It's a massive revision that undermines the credibility of the models driving the policy. Climate models are the tools used to predict warming and guide the policy. They've been treated as specific scripture. I like that driving policies from emissions reductions to renewable energy mandates, but with a key assumption proven wrong. The model's projections are called into question. Climate models predicted rapid CO2 buildup, assuming limited natural load absorption. Policies driven by these models were never proven to be beneficial in the first place, but were only assumed to be so. The discovery that plants are absorbing significantly more CO2 undermines the supposed need for extreme measures. And in other weather news, mysterious record methane surge since 2020 was not fossil fuels, but 90% due to microbes. 150 nations signed the Global Methane Pledge without bothering to check if all that methane was man-made. We shut down the modern world for the scamdemic. And hey, what happened? Methane levels rose even more. It seems that blaming fossil fuels for the global surge in emissions, but forgot to check the C-13 isotopes, James. We spend millions breathalyzing cows, the deadly cow farts, measuring their burps and farts, feeding them seaweed, but didn't think to do the basic chemistry. How could that be? Because as the joke now goes, they told me to follow the science, but all I found was the money. Gaps and inconsistencies, up to $41 billion in World Bank climate handouts, oh, unaccounted for, new report finds. It's like all that COVID money, or maybe Obama and Eric Holder's, you know, fast and furious guns. I don't know where they went. $41 billion of the funds distributed to climate causes by the World Bank between 2017 and 2023 are unaccounted for due to poor accounting standards, this according to an audit from Oxfam. The enormous sum represents almost 40% of the climate funds the bank dispersed during these last tribulational seven years, with World Bank data failing to show the, rece the recipients or the uses of the money. You'd think at least maybe one of them would make you feel a little okay. The bank's quick to, to brag about its climate financing billions, but these numbers are based on what it plans to spend and not what it actually spends once the project gets rolling. So says Kate Donald, head of Oxfam International's Washington, D.C. office, with the great takeaway quote, This is like asking your doctor to assess your diet by looking at your grocery list and not looking at what ends up in your fridge. That's aspirational versus operational. James, settled science, methane pledges, and climate handouts. Well, James, this is one of those rare instances where I, as a color commentator here on New World Next Week. I really don't know what else to say to add to these stories other than to say, if you do not understand the significance of these three stories put together and the narrative that they're they're putting out there, then you're probably one of those people who emailed me years ago to say, I thought you were a credible person, but then you started talking junk about climate science. Oh, you're one of those woo-woo weirdos. I'm never listening to you again. <laughs> now, 
<laughs> to be fair, I haven't had a lot of those emails in recent years, and I think that's because... Finally, it has caught on. The public has caught on to the idea that after the scandemic, exactly as you say, yeah, I followed the science, but all I found was the money. Yeah, uh, how could how could science possibly be corrupt? How could there possibly be any corruption amongst these scientists and researchers who float on clouds and only care about the truth? <laughs> well, now people are finally starting to question the big pharma science, and I think that means that they can't pretend that they don't understand the concept of flawed climate science anymore. In the same way that, as I've always said, one of the, the key things that the 9-11 Truth Movement actually accomplished was, at the very least, to wake the public up to the concept of false flag terrorism. People don't ask, why would the government attack itself anymore? Because it's very obvious why they would do that and blame it on their political enemies in order to start wars in the Middle East or what have you. Why would climate scientists possibly lie about or or fail to connect dots or fail to measure the isotope of methane that's actually being released? Does this have anything to do with agriculture? No? <laughs> Oops. Oops. Oh, well. But exactly as I, uh, as I mentioned on uh, the Unlimited Hangout podcast the other day, I I'm holding my breath for them to say, okay, guys, you don't have to eat the bugs anymore. Doomsday has been called off because it turns out we were completely wrong. Oh, actually, plants absorb 31% more CO2. Oh, actually, the methane is not coming from agriculture. It's coming from microbes. No, they're not going to call off doomsday because it is always doomsday because that is how they get their payday and all of the uh, controls that come along with that. So that is what this climate science is about. Anyway, I said I have nothing to add, but I guess I always have something to add. <laughs> I I would assume they'll just they'll they'll fail forward if at worst they'll admit, "Oh, I'm sorry, your government failed you. Give us more power and control and we swear the the rules and controls will will be more dialed in next time." 